Hey everybody, welcome to LEGO Rewind, where we take another look at old retired LEGO themes. Today is an uncertain time for the toy industry. While the giants continue to trudge on through the ever-tumultuous landscape of childhood, their value to the consumer has come into question. With the availability of smart devices and such wholesome entertainment as apps of animated children that cry if you stop spending your parents' money on in-game purchases, is it really all that worthwhile to have a plastic thing in your hands that can't love you back the way this can? And what parent wants to spend $80 on a toy that's just gonna end up in pieces all around the house when you could get Roblox for far less and no mess? Do kids just not like toys anymore? Have toys as past generations knew them become boring wastes of space, soon to go the way of kick the can as apps take over and become the new face of the toy industry? I don't know. But in their dark age, LEGO already answered those questions with another question. Why not both? Enter Mindstorms, a then-perfect fusion of plastic bricks and computer technology. Like capture special family moments. I mean, we're not assuming you'd want to peek on your mother in the shower, kids, but it's an option. You never know, maybe- It'll turn you on. Hey, I didn't hold a gun to LEGO's head to make them release those ads. LEGO were just weirdos back then, and weird these were, with wacky colors and designs that were beyond all over the place. It really could be anything, but Mindstorm's true form was the intelligent brick, a charming if gaudy programmable... Ah, oh, jeez. I admit, I didn't know what I was walking into with this one. I remember seeing so many cool product shots and catalogs growing up, but when I looked these up on sites like Brickset, all I could find were images like this that don't really show you anything. And it really doesn't help that they didn't take extra pictures of the models from different angles back then like they do now for online retail, and just finding decent quality images from back then can be dicey. But looking up each and individually elsewhere, I was able to find just enough to get by for this video. The beauty of the smart brick was its versatility. Filled with motors and covered with attachment points, you could tack almost anything onto it. Any number of LEGO elements, bricks are technic, and as long as it was assembled in a comprehensive enough way, and you equipped it with the proper sensors for light, touch, sound, and even temperature, you could program it to do anything with your computer and a disc. They really wanted to make kids feel smart. Even if they were just following instructions, the line was a nice springboard into other things. Somewhere you know there's at least one kid who played with these and grew up to be an engineer or programmer in tech. It just seems statistically improbable that it wouldn't happen, right? Even something as simple as a camera that receives commands from cards you flash in front of it and it responds accordingly. It actually served people drinks at the 2001 Nuremberg Toy Fair, wrap your head around that. This might seem primitive today, but it was revolutionary. And expensive. A lot of these sensors, batteries, and other bits and bobs were sold separately. Sometimes you'd have the default set and an upgrade kit in another wave to add to it. Some of these were priced in the hundreds that could really pile up fast. And when you take 20 years of inflation into account... Uh... <laughs> What was that about normal Legos being too expensive again? But it was surely worth it to some. One thing that was nice to see as it expanded from 1.0 into the later 1.5 and 2.0 ranges was the inspiration drawn from other lines of the time. Mindstorms had a little something for everybody, be it space exploration, sports, animals, a bit of insectoids because why not, and even Star Wars, like this R2-D2 model from the Droid Developer Kit. Although I admit I prefer the later version that was just a nice little build with no electronics. This one's kind of ugly. But I can forgive that considering this was one of the first Star Wars sets of LEGO ever released, and no one remembers it for some reason. I think it's pretty remarkable. But the Dark Side... <coughs> Dark Side developer kit was branded into the surface of my brain. This has a lot of those panels they don't use anymore with the giant holes that look like intakes or nostrils. Same thing, really. You can make an ad ad? An at? A destroyer droid? A vulture droid? All with functions. They were like those Technic Star Wars figures, but controllable. 2002 saw a line that isn't technically a part of Mindstorms, but many fans consider it so given it's basically the same thing. The Spybotics kits were much like the Smart Brick, a chassis you dress up with arms and wheels and teeth and program to go on missions. It was a blink and you'll miss a kind of theme that came and went seemingly overnight, but it had a coolness factor that isn't hard to see that people remember it for. To this day, I love that beautiful hard candy coated sheen they have with all the circuits visible inside, it's beautifully clean. Finding good images of these was particularly difficult. 
And the marketing might sound familiar. Wow. I hope the algorithm doesn't pick up that shameless sound alike for the real thing. 2006 saw a more contemporary incarnation of Mindstorms called NXT. More slick and refined, like something an iPod gave birth to. And it's nice. Basically just the same toys as before, with new advancements like Bluetooth capabilities. But I kinda miss seeing studs and big eyes and garish colors all over it. I prefer that more haphazard look, like it was thrown together from scrap in a garage or a warehouse. And I admit, at the time, I thought this was very cool. But it just doesn't feel feel as Lego. I mean, it feels more like normal toys, all big and round and smooth, and it only grew more bland and refined in later waves. Though they always had a main robot that was decently lifelike and endearing, like a clumsy child. Then they went hardcore in 2013 with a more mature image. Snakes and scorpions, all the servos and sensors redesigned to look more aggressive with sharper corners and red accents, punk rock hair made of serrated blades. Maybe I was wrong in episode 12 and this was the end of Lego's edgy teenager phase, just one last laughable effort to squeeze it out of their system. It's cool though, I like seeing more lifelike creations like this, it's actually the closest to recapturing those initial years Mindstorms ever got before dying. Yep, Mindstorms proper is no more, but it does live on to a degree in various other lines as Lego's battle to integrate current technology into their toys continues. And just recently, Mindstorms was reincarnated in a way, as Lego Boost. So far it's only one set, but look at all you get with it. Yeah, you can only build one of these models at a time, but that was always the case with Mindstorms. The colors and textures may be scatterbrained, but this is a return to form in my eyes. It's not really for me, but I appreciate how alive these things truly feel, especially Vern, this adorable Johnny Five looking feller. He has movable eyebrows and everything. And yes, this product is incredibly expensive. But that's electronics for you, you know the drill. It's also compatible with Stormbringer, one of this year's Ninjago sets. I love the vanilla dragon itself. I think it's a big improvement over past ones that really were just clumps of parts with wings. And all that beauty disappears when you combine it with Boost. Someone put this poor critter out of its misery. But I think this is a secret to keeping Boost relevant, is to encourage builders to integrate it into other products, to make it more compatible with LEGO's other lines. And maybe more affordable. I hope this isn't the end of LEGO Boost, that it isn't a one and done. I want it to thrive. I want it to become more advanced and evolve into new forms under new names, a spiritual successor to what Mindstorms was for many years. But I don't know the future. So that's it for today. If you want to support my work, please check out my graphic novel series, Planet Ripple. You can buy the books on Amazon or read an early draft of the first book for free. Links to everything in the description. Thanks for watching. Next time, a turn for the worster. Uh, western. We're, we're doing western. You build them. You control them. Hundreds of light activated Star Wars droids. They don't just move, they groove. The Lego Mindstorms Droid Developer Kit. Your imagination rules. <laughs>